Welcome everybody to a long delayed headache, I mean video, that I've been putting off for a while because this is a very, very complicated subject. It's been a very basic question for a long time. Hey Beast, how do I spend my Cori perk? But the answer has uh, a quite a lengthy notepad going on right now because there are, as you might have noticed, a ton of weapons in this game and... If you aren't aware, uh, Cory perk wasn't always a thing. So back in my day, we always had one six perk, and that was what it was. I mean, if you wanted to get a different six perk, you had to open more llamas, get more copies of that weapon, or research more from the shop. And nowadays, you can change it with these Cory perk items, and uh, that is very, very cool. But these are very expensive, and it is not entirely clear whether or not all of these changes are useful. So before we get any further into the video, there is a lot of disclaimers. I just want to get out of the way right away. First and foremost, timestamps below. You don't need to watch through this in any kind of order. If you're looking for a specific weapon or a certain perk that you're curious about, I will do my best to label my footnotes in the in the in the description uh, and also the pinned comment. Meaning, I still to this day am not perfectly aware of every single weapon in the game. But it has been months, and I'm aware of like 90% of them. So if there is any weapon that comes out of the blue and some six perk radically changes how it works, and I somehow missed it, which is quite unlikely, uh, I'll pin a comment with any corrections, as well as future changes, because I can't read the future, I can't know what they're going to do, but if they do make anything uh, worth changing, you know, any of my suggestions in this video, the pinned comment will cover any of that. Always scroll down on any of my videos, for that matter, to check for any corrections, because times change in the videos, well, can't, because I have to remake it if it's that serious. So, that is just a very important thing that I want to get out of the way. Also, there is no one suggestion. If you came here for the one weapon that you gotta change, sorry, <laughs> it's just not something that exists. There are fan favorites, and I'm sure that we'll get to those at some point in this video, but without there being a number one pick, I can say that there are a, a lot of good options, and Cory Perk isn't as rare as I made it sound. I mean, I think some people have as much as seven now, which is kind of a lot. I only have two, but I will say that I have spent exactly one core well no i've spent two core reperk in my day so these aren't like main suggestions but they are things that we'll get to later down the line and i do want to mention the one that i changed it to uh for one is a spectro blade where this came with snare naturally that gives you no damage at all it's not an improvement in any way other than just slowing the enemies down that are like already in front of your face so you never really need snare um but we did the math you know to chunai and found out that that hitting an enemy granting damage on top of like the triple attack crit build optimized everything paleo luna white out fiona and support all the bells and whistles that stacking damage perk can make the spectral blade just a little bit stronger than the storm king's ravager by like a few percent points now it still needs to be water to be like significantly better against fire enemies and whatnot but the fact that the spectral blade can out damage the ravager with that six perk I felt like that was worth a core reperk, especially considering that the slowed and snared wasn't doing anything anyway. And that is a theme that I want to get to throughout this video. This isn't just jumping to a suggestion. I'm saying that since I can't give you one recommendation, I want this video to be able to allow you to make your own decision, meaning a core reperk needs to be used in such a way so that it drastically improves the weapon that you're using. A very, very common question, the, probably the most common, is should I use damage to affliction or slowed and snared or the stacking crit rating? Now, if you don't even know what that means, I'll show you. So here's a thrasher with the each shot fired grants crit rating. That can be the highest damaging thrasher that can exist. However, you're going to need to get about 15 shots in for that to even make sense. And by that point, your enemy is dead or you've stopped firing for one second or you stop to reload or shit happens. You know, you're in the middle of a fight, you're building, you're whatever. That, that bonus gets interrupted. So you're constantly starting from scratch. And I broke it down really well in my Silent Spectre video. I'll try to do so here, but I'll, I'll link that below. I get way further in depth. I just show that, honestly, when it comes down to it, the uh, damage to slowed and snared or affliction bonus is about the same as that each shot fire grants crit rating. Now, I'm not kidding. The crit rating is the better option when you're like 15 bullets in for sustained damage against a mini boss, for example. But is it so significantly better that you need to use a core reperk on it? In my opinion, no. Simply. I mean, just frankly, no. However, some people might choose to go that route. I'm going to save my Cory perk. This is already a, a schematic that does plenty of damage. As you can see, I already have a copy of the Thrasher with that crit rating, and I, I don't use it, so it's it's just not 
it's not good enough in my opinion. Now, the other Corey perk I used was kind of a good example, I think, of a good situation where sometimes life happens. So, to those who weren't here on stream, this was one of the most brutal moments on my entire stream. I was trying to get my third Killjoy. I had one that was Element Fire, you know, damage to damage to nature. And then I had one that was Element Water, damage to fire. And I wanted one that was damage to water with the Element Nature. And I got it on my second try, just researching it from the collection book, and didn't realize it. So I, you know, trying to get my copy back, spent about 1800 Epic and Legendary Flux failing to get this weapon. And at that point, that far in, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to use a Core Reaper. <laughs> I'm just going to grab whatever copy, no matter what perk I get, unless it's damage to water, I am f I am just using the Core Reaper to get damage to water. And that's what I did, and I don't regret it. I spent a disgusting amount of flux that day, and this is my example of sometimes, if you just really need one more perk, Core Reaper is exactly what that's for. So that's my criteria. It either needs to be super worth it, like a definite, Im like a definite increase, like the Spectre Blade was, or it needs to just spare you from, you know, having to go through it, like the Killjoy. And that segues into another thing. So the Killjoy, while it's not exactly an event weapon, you can go to the, uh, let's see, well, it's an event schematic, duh, but you can actually research these, which is exactly what I was doing. So that's kind of a bad example of something you'd want to use a Core Reaper on. Obviously, I explained myself, but Typically, you wouldn't want to do that. Typically, you'd want to save it for a weapon that you can't get another copy of. For example, uh, an interesting one is like the Corsair and the Jack's Revenge. So these two are a very interesting case where they have the, uh, the, the combo deal, where the Jack's Revenge headshot eliminations boost crit chance with swords, and then I believe the Corsair has something similar where it's pistol headshot damage, or no, on crits, increases pistol headshot. So the idea is you're supposed to hit a headshot with your pistol, boost that crit rating, switch to your sword, get a crit hit, switch back to your pistol, use that bonus headshot damage, and switch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's how these weapons were intended to be used. However, that is a very stressful way to play. Even explaining that, it kind of annoyed me, because I always just, it was kind of fun to use it like that, but oh my goodness, that's frustrating. So with the core reaper, you can actually turn this into like a normal sword. You can just give it the stacking crit rating, and hey, now you have a melee that doesn't need a pistol. Because if you're not using the Jack's Revenge, this is a dead six perk. You're buffing the pistol damage of a pistol you're not using. Um, that's even worse than the Slowden Snare that I mentioned. So this is a good example of where a Core Reaper can turn the Corsair and the Jack's Revenge into usable weapons. In fact, I actually want to scroll down to the Jack's Revenge. This is going to happen a lot in this video. I'm sorry, these weapons are all over the place, and I am really screwing up trying to find it. So... Yeah, the Jack's Revenge is an interesting case where you can actually give it a couple of different options where the headshot explosions can cause, uh, whoops, headshot eliminations can cause an explosion. That can give you some really good area of effect damage, which is what pistols are kind of lacking. And on bullet, you can splinter into shrapnel, which is good. But this is once again an example where are those perks so powerful that the Jack's Revenge, you know, you need to use a Cory perk on it? In my opinion, no, but maybe you really like the Jack's Revenge, and you want that to happen. I don't know. This was just set up for a, a, an argument I had in Discord. But this is a weapon that, with double headshot and the right loadout, it, it actually breaks the sheet because it does over a million damage already. So, do you really need to spend one of your very precious core cool reperks to make it a little bit better? And I say that with quotes, because that headshot elimination causing an explosion is extra damage i can't deny it but it's not that big of a deal so yeah now i kind of started the video with these suggestions because these were on my list and i also just wanted to continue to explain that that is a criteria you're looking for so even though i've already knocked a couple of things off my list we've already passed a couple of timestamps. if you're already watching uh let's get into some some that are interesting examples in fact i actually want to start with that stacking crit rating that i mentioned in the beginning Obviously, I already covered this, so I'm not going to get too far into it, but the basic idea is that, yeah, the damage to slowed and snared in Affliction, that 45%, is, give or take, uh, not significantly worse than the stacking crit rating. But an example I had is actually really, really interesting for the... I have the stabs worth listed here. So, the Spectre, as I mentioned, you know, I already explained how it's, it's, it's not significantly better, but the stabs worth is funny, where this is a weapon that kind of tries to bait you because it has that stacking crit rating but as far as i can tell with the way that we use this weapon because it has a really high swing speed it's really good with paleo luna this is more or less the build you want to go for 
that stacking crit rating is not actually doing anything for you. There's there's just no room to have the double attack speed, which is better with Luna. I'm sorry, you might like crits, but if you're using Paleo Luna with this build, you you want the attacks you want the attack swing at at all costs. So an extra stacking crit rating is actually not useful at all. And I didn't mention this in this video, but with the stacking crit rating on the SMGs, you're actually losing that fifth perk. All you have left over for the SMGs is like damage to stun staggered, which isn't really happening, or damage to miss monsters and bosses, which is, you know, 36% is less than 45%. So you'll have some help on the bigger targets, which are the ones that are going to need that much ammo anyway, but you're losing that 45 bonus to every enemy that you hit. So, with a stab's worth, this is a good example where this looks like a really enticing upgrade. It's actually not. That damage to Affliction or Slowed and Snared is definitely better to keep that fifth perk where it is. And so it's a good example of, of a way that you can, you can try to be careful. Now, 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 now. This is a very, very popular one. And it's probably my, my favorite to talk about. Because this is probably where most people are going to be spending their Cori perk. And I can't even blame you. Kind of. It depends on which one you, you pick. But crit hits causing an explosion is really popular right now. So this is an example where I do not have a complete list of every melee that is affected by this. If somebody has one and comments it, I would love to pin that comment. Or like, it would be my own comment if I make any corrections. But I will credit you if, if somebody can give me a complete list and double check it. That that is every melee that has the stacking, uh, not stacking, the crit hits cause an explosion. Because that is really really fun so this is probably the first part of the video where i feel like gameplay is actually necessary it does exactly what you'd think the fort spill explodes whenever you hit a crit which is just awesome it makes this weapon a tremendous amount of fun um the fort spill is just the one that i've been using it's kind of a meme in our in our community thanks acorn but it is by no means maybe the best one. I think it has the highest swing speed and a really good damage output, so it's an unironically good weapon. In fact, when I made my video on this, I recorded the gameplay, I think, in a 160 zone and didn't even notice. It was either this or the Husk Stomper, which, uh, mind you, is another example of a pretty unexceptional melee, you know, hammer hardware. But when you give it the crit hits cause an explosion, it gives us some useful area of effect damage that is actually pretty fun. And I've actually, oh, I, I exited out of my thing. I actually got some comments recently on the uh, the slasher, the, what is this thing called? The supersonic slasher. Apparently this has a crit hits cause an explosion. And this is one that I understand might have a pretty high swing speed. I have not explored this weapon that much. And this is where there's a little bit of an open end to this video where if you can find a melee that has a pretty good swing speed or good all around damage and has that crit hits cause an explosion, you might want to go for that because it could make it really good. I know the Armageddon is another axe that has the crit hits cause an explosion. Look for a melee that has that and you could have a fun time. Now the Argon Axe is another example. This is probably the last one I'm going to show, but it has a base 30% crit chance without any crit rating perk. And so that crit hits cause an explosion is already going to be happening 30% of the time before you even give it crit rating. I've been told that with Whiteout Fiona in the lead and a crit rating perk on the Argon Axe, I think you can get up to 75% chance to crit or something which is a little ridiculous at that point you're going to be losing out on attack speed or whatever and it's not going to be as worth it but i'm just saying you could have a good time with that now this section of the video is going to start off with the vacuum tube weapons but this and the next two timestamps are going to be completely dedicated to elemental bonuses so first and foremost all of the vacuum tube weapons are very unique in that they have the six perk ability for chain lightning and this is once again where uh gameplay is almost required for you to even you know conceptualize what I'm showing if you've never seen this before. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. When you hit an enemy or eliminate an enemy, depending on the weapon, it chains lightning out to the other enemies. So Vacuum 2 Bow has done this just natively forever. It introduced the six perk, but with the ability to change uh, the six perks, the core re-perk, you can make any of your Vacuum 2 weapons chain to other enemies. This makes the shotgun really, really fun. It makes, well, all of them really, really fun, but most notably, like the Vacuum 2 pistol, for example, is uh, the Vacuum 2 revolver, I should say, because a pistol exists Exists, but it's technically an SMG. Yeah, I know. I'm confused too. But the vacuum tube revolver is a pistol that doesn't really have that good of area of effect damage. But with the ability to chain to other enemies, it's actually able to eliminate more than just the one enemy you're shooting at. And then the last example I just want to talk about and show is a vacuum tube sword, where when you're hitting and eliminating enemies with this thing, they are chaining like crazy, and it makes that sword so much more fun and so much more useful. The caveat is what I mentioned earlier, where these are not event weapons. Vacuum tube weapons are in all the normal llamas. You can get them from normal missions. I point them out in my daily videos every single day. Vacuum tube weapons are all over the place there is absolutely no need to spend a core re-perk on this however 
If you are really, really unlucky, you have been just completely unable to acquire one of these weapons. Maybe a single core reaper could be worth it on like the sword, maybe the revolver if you really want to use it, the AR, the shotgun, and I think that's about it for my suggestion. I know that the vacuum tube axe is kind of good. And then there's kind of a funny example with the vacuum tube uh, launcher where it can have that chain lightning, but I'm not 100% certain if that's useful because of the other six perk. Now, the other six perk is, well, the other side of the vacuum tube weapon. So if I can find the vacuum tube launcher in my inventory, which is unlikely because I don't even know if I have a copy of it. <gasps> I do. Yay. Okay. So. What we have going on here is the extra damage against water enemies. So not only do the vacuum tube weapons have a chain lightning, but they have the, well, bonus damage against water. I don't feel like it's necessary to go in depth on what that means. It just means you'll be doing 44% more damage to water enemies, which is what you should be going against if you're using the vacuum tube weapons anyway. So just take everything I just said about the illuminating enemies chain lightning thing and fill in the water enemy bonus because that just makes every vacuum tube weapon 44% stronger to water ele elemental enemies, which is kind of a good bonus and up to you. I can't honestly say which one is better. For the revolver, for example, it gives it some much needed area of effect. For the bow, it gives it some much needed area of effect. But for like the AR or the shotgun or the rocket launcher, perhaps you might want that 44% damage to, to water. Now, if you don't want to do more damage to water enemies, you could use the black metal weapons. So I didn't prep this uh, on the screen here, but the black metal weapons, um, they don't really need much of a display. I don't think I need to show this, but it's the same thing as before where I believe every single one of the weapons that you see here has that ability to have their, their perk changed to the damage to nature. So... These are interesting because as of recording this, Dungeons has just left like a couple of weeks ago. So you probably had ample opportunity to save up on the Black Drum, the Blackout AR. In fact, I myself did just as much. So if I can scroll down to the Blackout, yeah, I just have this sitting in my inventory, 44% extra damage to nature enemies. That is just a direct upgrade because with all of the Black Metal weapons, they have uh, perks that hurt you, which people don't love. I respect the idea where you can get that fifth perk where it gives you more damage against enemies based on your missing health and that can be a really nice bonus but it is a very dangerous way to play and it is very unfriendly to people who might not be as versed in combat or they're just a more casual player it's a really hardcore way to play and you can avoid all of it by not only giving yourself a constant 44 percent bonus damage to nature enemies but no chance of killing yourself in the middle of a fight so it's kind of a good bonus and the metal marauder is a good example too of a weapon that's really really powerful black metal and everything you know it's the same set that i'm talking about but that extra damage to nature just removes the ability to hurt yourself and just makes this a monster of a rocket launcher that 44 percent bumps it up a couple of tiers on the rocket list and if you're willing to spend a core reperk on it you can but the reason i haven't and i suggest people don't is because there are already weapons like the santa's little helper and the deatomizer and the storm king's wrath like the rockets are very very competitive and those weapons already don't need a core reperk now what's kind of like a pseudo black metal weapon is the jack o launcher so the jack o launcher has that six perk option where you can have the damage to nature as well while it's not black metal it is locked to fire so if you want to just make your jack o launcher 44 percent stronger to nature enemies that could be a really good one and i feel like this is a popular pick because while i don't suggest it you don't need this i mean the santa's little helper already exists and all the other rockets i just mentioned you know the bazooka even but the jack o launcher is stronger than the bazooka and if you want to keep it on top you can just remove that affliction damage because it's not really helping you that affliction does like a meaningless amount of extra damage and it's kind of a dead perk so if you really like the jack o launcher and you like that pumpkin giggling whenever you shoot it then that could be a pretty good option and it's also sort of a safe pick because the jack o launcher is not really coming back the way that it's been available for a long time is you get it from the collection book and once you get it you got it i am not currently aware of any way to get a second copy unless a weapon voucher is possible i'm not certain of that but i, I wouldn't recommend a weapon voucher on that just for the collection book so I also and cannot even guarantee that you will get the new six perk out of the collection book. That is a whole weapon voucher for a gamble, assuming you can even grab it, which I don't even know. Just live on video. Let's go to the event schematics, scroll down to the Fort Nightmares weapons, Jack Launcher. Yeah, you can't even research it. So I think that one could be a very, very safe pick with a core reperk because there is no sign of it returning anytime soon. 
Now, the last one I want to mention as far as elemental stuff goes is a little bit less focused because there isn't one set like black metal or vacuum tube that's focused on just being water. But the holiday weapons are pretty close because the frostbite, the blizzard blitzer and the snowball launcher are all locked to water. And it's my understanding that they can all get that damage to uh, damage to to fire enemies. So if I scroll down to the snowball launcher, it's actually I think I went past it. An interesting example because not only does it have damage to uh, to fire enemies, but it has that six perk where it can stun and freeze an enemy. So that is really really interesting because I've heard that it's not that useful, but it is an option where stunning or knocking back can freeze an enemy in place, and that is. That is interesting. Doesn't affect enemies that have recently been frozen. Mist monsters are bosses, which kind of sucks because the mist monsters are the enemies that you'd want to freeze. And it's also my understanding, I'm checking this live as I'm recording, the Blizzard Blitzer has this as well, where you can stun or knock back an enemy to freeze them. Now, I believe it's already always had that. It was either that or the hitting an enemy causes them to freeze. I know it had this one. I don't know if it had both. But my point is, that one might be worth a core reperk, but that one is definitely up to you. However, it is a good factoid to note that the Blizzard Blitzer is if you factor in the regular DPS of the weapon divided by the time spent reloading and compare it to every other assault rifle, the Blizzard Blitzer is the highest DPS AR in the game when you factor in reload. That is a very tricky thing to say though because it has a very limited range, it's shooting snowballs, you can see that you have to lead your shots, it's, it's not maybe the best weapon to be wearing that crown, but it is mathematically true. So if you want to make it all the more stronger than the damage to fire enemies uh, can be a really nice 44% bonus, but all of the six perks on the Blizzard Blitzer are pretty good. Like the one I have is critical hits, snare the target, and nearby enemies. That's pretty nice. Uh, if you crit an enemy, which you'll probably do often, you know, 38% of the time with this build, um, that's that's going to freeze or at least slow down all of the enemies around it, which is kind of nice. Um, but this perk freezes them. So... Do you want them frozen in place or walking slowly? I don't really know. You can't really go wrong. The Blizzard Blitzer is sort of a, a catch-all. Now, the other one that I mentioned there was the Frostbite Sniper, which I don't have a copy of, so I can't show you, but uh, it's my understanding that that weapon is not worth any kind of investment whatsoever. Nevertheless, a core reperk. Oh my goodness, we are getting towards the end of the list, but we're not quite there yet. Another one that I have to mention is the five hits in a row. So this one was famously donned by the Bundle Bus and the Mercury LMG natively for a long, long time. And these two weapons were top weapons in the game for a long, long time because on that fifth hit, that explosion that occurred was very strong and very busted. Instead of doing 70% of the damage dealt in your last bullet, it was more like 170%. <laughs> it, was, it was a very, very strong bonus and very, very nice. And in fact, I would venture to say that it wasn't even overpowered. However, that got patched a long time ago and the Mercury LMG fell down to like C tier where it belongs. Now the Bundle Bus never needed that six perk to be overpowered, but it helped. And so the Bundle Bus is useful. Definitely used it on Storm King. Not that that six perk would have even helped on the crystals, but it, uh, it certainly got demoted when that thing got fixed. And the Bundle Bus is a funny example where you just want to keep it. I mean, my build here has triple crit damage because I was using this for first shot Rio in a video, but that each shot fired Grant's crit rating is kind of pointless. Like, it stacks to 15 times, but your next burst, I don't know if there's a full second of downtime in between, but I don't even know if you could properly utilize that six perk. So the five hits in a row that comes native on the Bundle Bus is probably just fine. All right, Beast. Well, if you don't have a perk suggestion, then what are you talking about? So, the Mercury LMG also has the stacking damage and crit rating. Now, I'm not certain if either of those will really severely help this weapon. I think the five hits in a row is a pretty unique perk and good to have anyway. It just means that you can focus on a mini boss or a mist monster or a fatty husk in the middle of a crowd of zombies, and it'll be every five hits constantly hitting the enemies around it for some good area, area of effect damage. So, I think that perk is fine. I don't think that it's a good enough upgrade to change it to the damage or crit rating, but it should be noted that those perks exist and it is a bonus. Now, I didn't dedicate a whole section of this video to this just to talk about those two. Hello, it's editing me and I knew I'd forget something. So on the five hits cause an explosion, I wanted to mention the Hydra because I actually got this weapon on accident in ventures, not intending on learning anything. But as it turns out, the way that the Hydra works is probably known to you as a shotgun AR hybrid meaning you are using an assault weapon, but it uses shotgun shells and it shoots in pellets, which based on my understanding, based on the look of the weapon and what I was experiencing, 
every other shot is essentially six bullets hitting the enemy, which uh, is, is enough to activate the six perk. So every, you know, five shots, so every other hit on an enemy, you're getting an explosion out of this weapon. And I found that to be really useful. So... I don't know. Maybe it's worth using. Um, this was a kind of a niche weapon, so you use double crit damage and reload, and then you pair it with first shot Rio. That's kind of like the meta for the Hydra. So if you're already doing that and you use that loadout a lot, you might want to consider the landing five hits in a row causes an explosion. I might do this myself. It's not even my style of play. It's not even a weapon I really enjoy using, but that is interesting enough to me to where I felt like it might uh, might be worth it. The five hits in a row can be used by another weapon that I'm sure a lot of you can already see coming, the Hemlock. Now, the Hemlock is a hybrid weapon, so meaning this weapon it looks like an SMG. It performs more similarly like an assault rifle, or at least back in the day, it was classed as an assault rifle, but performed more, more like an SMG. Um, but it doesn't have that stacking crit rating. It doesn't have the stacking crit damage. In fact, they treated this one more like the ARs, which it has the typical medieval stuff where each shot can grant shield or, you know, regain shield. Um, and it has the slowed and snared, but... This is one that is much like the uh, the Spectral Blade that I showed, where you can probably tell that the Slowed and Snared on this, on this weapon is doing nothing, because without a damage to Slowed and Snared perk anywhere on the weapon, this is just a useless amount of damage. It doesn't do any damage at all. Now, it can slow enemies down, which is nice. I should have mentioned that earlier, but I feel like that's kind of obvious. That can be nice, and it stacks with Floor Spikes, but I've sort of stopped using Floor Spikes on a personal note. So, my suggestion is... As I've said in the top 10 weapons video, the landing five hits in a row, if you're not aware, the 70% divided by the five hits is a bas basically a 14% damage buff. So if you're hitting a heavy target like a Miss Monster, Fatty, or, or Mini Boss, Smasher, whatever, uh, that bonus makes this weapon just barely the strongest SMG in the game. Kind of. Because, <laughs> there's always caveats with this, you guys, the Ratatat also holds that ability, where because it can have three crit damage perks on it, you throw in a crit rating, double crit damage, and then stacking crit rating, for example, the Ratatat can also be the highest SMG base damage. But they're kind of hard to com compare because you're stacking that damage on the Ratatat, and the Hemlock doesn't even get that as well because... Most enemies are going to be dead before that fifth shot even occurs, so you're not really getting a 14% damage buff. But, as I always say, if they're dead in the first five shots anyway, then who cares? I mean, it's, it doesn't sound like you ever needed that buff anyway. So, the Hemlock is a very, very strong contender. Now, the bullet, the bullet splinters into shrapnel can be nice. I have not found that to be useful. It was rumored to me that it gave a 40% damage to the target that you were shooting at, but even if that was true, I did not find it to be. I did a little bit of testing. Uh, I, I did not find that to be the case at all. Even if that is true, that would be a glitch, and I'm suspecting that would be patched at some point anyway. So naturally speaking, as it's intended to occur, 40% damage to the enemies behind your target is, is not that useful it's nice it's extra damage is it worth a cory perk no if you're going to be spending a cory perk i think that five hits on a single target is definitely what you want to be focusing on and if you do use the cory perk on this weapon be sure to focus on the biggest target in the crowd at any given time uh try to group the enemies shoot the the fatty or the miss monster in the middle of a crowd of weaker zombies and that would be the most efficient way to use this weapon and uh that is where the hemlock can get a, a drastic improvement now, staying in tune with the holiday weapons, there is one that I love to mention, and that is the pop shot. So, the pop shot is when I mentioned that damage divided by reload whole thing with the blizzard blitzer. The pop shot is another one where it is tied with the ground pounder, husk buster, and because the husk buster is a scavenger weapon by extension, the stampede as well, as the exact same DPS. So, these weapons are all preference, basically. And the pop shot does it with essentially a useless six perk. So, that five headshots in a row increases weapon damage is nice. If you want to go ahead and hit five shots in a row with a shotgun, then go for it. It's not that hard to hit with those pellets, but what I think is interesting is that you do have some other options, but none of them really help you because, uh, as I'm double-checking there, the damage to Affliction doesn't exist, so that Affliction damage isn't going to be helping you that much, and the crit hits snare the target is a thing, and nearby enemies. So, I don't know if that's worth a core perk. It would be better than nothing, but I wonder if that five headshots in a row might not be just a little bit of damage compared to the zero that you get from the snare, but especially if you're using a shotgun, constantly snaring all of the enemies around you could help you get away, reload, because in this game when you take damage it cancels your reload. That could be a helpful thing to have, and it might save you a few times. 
I'm not certain if it's really worth a core reperk, but I figured a weapon as powerful as a pop shot shouldn't go ignored. Now, on the topic of shotguns, some of them do have, again, another baity six perk, where it looks like a good option, but I'm not certain that it is. So, the stunning or knocking back an enemy deals 12 base damage. Uh, this also applies to some rocket launchers, where that might actually be a nice bonus. Again, worth a whole core reperk? I doubt it. The Deatomizer and the Santa's Little Helper both have this perk and are doing just fine without it, as with most RPGs, but if you really want to make your weapon that much stronger, that could be an option. I'm just saying, uh, to use it, you would have to take away the damage to afflict or slow and snare, meaning on the Ground Pounder, you'd have to be only bonusing against Miss Monsters and bosses, or you could have that 60% to damage stun and stagger. Now, most shotguns are going to be stun and staggering enemies, so that could be nice, um, but it's kind of a, kind of a zero sum thing. Like this is a kind of nice six perk, but you're losing your fifth perk. So I don't know if that's worth a Corey perk, but it's an option that I've always been, well, I've always wanted to do that because it is a direct upgrade to the rocket launchers. Like kind of, kind of, because the deatomizer has that exploding ring of damage. So I don't even know if that would be helpful. It's just one of those things that exists. It's not worth a Corey perk in my eyes, but if you give me unlimited Corey perk, yeah, I'd love to try it out. And maybe one of you would too. I don't know what the edit's going to be like, but I am 30 minute, 32 minutes into recording this video and my throat hurts. But we are coming up on, I think, I'm reading through my list right now, the very last suggestion. In fact, I'm going to show this just in case anybody at some point in this video is curious what we're working with here. I believe I've covered everything up until... The bows. Yeah, the bows and the obliterator. So, I guess those are sort of the same topic. Let's start with the uh, the obliterator, because this is one of my favorite weapons. Well, it is my favorite weapon to give to defenders. It's basically the only one I use. The headshot eliminations cause an explosion is quite useless. Uh, they don't hit headshots that often, and I don't even know if this perk is helping them. But the standing in place granting damage can be nice. I don't know if I have any footage of this, but you can kind of image with me. If you put the defender down in the middle of the pad and then a cone on top of it, they'll stand still and they won't be able to move. So if you have that stacking damage perk, your defender will do, after 10 seconds, 55% more damage. In that specific use case where you're limiting their movement, that could be quite useful. And I believe the same perk exists on the Neon Sniper as well, and could make for a, uh, a nice little bonus to your defenders. And the Neon Sniper as well. Five headshots in a row, your defenders will never. I they will never. <laughs> I mean, not in any way that you could trust it. So the stars would have to align for that bonus to be active for all of 10 seconds. Standing in place, granting damage could be a nice bonus to those weapons. And then lastly, with a now sore throat, I want to mention that some bows have that stunning or knocking back deals 12 base damage bonus. And that can be nice, you know, on the powder keg, for example. Again, sold and snared, not really helping this weapon. Although, it is an explosive weapon, so it could affect a whole crowd of zombies and make them all walk slower. You can get away and reload. But typically, if you're running a bow, you might not have her, but worth a voucher, in my opinion, you might, you're probably using Stoneheart Farah, so you can always double jump away. I'm not certain that sold and snared is necessary, so that stunning or knocking back dealing base damage could be useful on the powder keg or any bow that it comes with. I just, once again... I'm not certain that that's worth a whole core reperk, but as always, it is worth mentioning. Holy smokes, I knew this video would be tough. All right. I most certainly probably missed something, but if I did, pin comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a a an effort to make. If you guys want to support the channel, feel free to use code message checkout. You can become a channel member here with the link in the description below. Join button on the channel page. Follow my Twitch down below. The streams are awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. And then.